Hi, it's Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kirk. Okay, so today we are checking out some Periphery and the song is Blood Eagle. This is your choice, Kirk. Why are we checking out Periphery and Blood Eagle? Yep, so the singer Spencer Sotelo is one of the five idols that I'm endeavouring to try to interview for our documentary series, How to Interview Your Musical Idols in Six Months or Less. Or not, in our case, for many of us. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from Andy, who is successful. Don't give it, don't give it away. Yeah, um, yeah th this band, uh, just briefly, that feeling I first heard when I was 15 and somebody showed me Siamese Dream by the Smashing Pumpkins changed my life. I'd never heard guitar music like that. And I never thought I would capture that feeling again until I heard this album. Um, it's actually 2019. It kind of got me back into progressive metal uh, and gave me some belief again that there's a lot of innovative music out there. So um, the, the vocals on this are just incredible. You've got the whole range in here. The guitars will blow your mind. The drums. Dave, you're a drummer. When it comes to guitar solo, can you try and work out what the time signature is in the drums? It's just, it's just impossible for me to get my head around it. Um, this is heavy as fuck, uh, but it's also got some anthemic moments as well. Okay. So, um, Let's go check I'm it out then. Think. One. Yeah. 
Okay, periphery. There we go. Let me just close that screen down. Uh, was that bloody eagle? Yes. Right. So, uh, who should we go to first on this one? Go on, Kirk. Talk to us about it then. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, it's more important to get your reaction, isn't it? Because I, I love this song, and you should give that to every Ukrainian uh, infantryman defending their country against <laughs> Russia. And I'm sure they, that that would help them to uh, to hold the line. Um, Bullets would probably be help, more helpful, but okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I mean, everything about that song, this is what really, where do you start with that? I mean, the guitars, very simple chug riff, but listen to the rhythmic intensity of it. Meshuga obviously is a big influence on Periphery, but in no way did he rip them off. Um, the, the guitar solo is very much based on the work of that great jazz fusion guitar player, Alan Holdsworth, the English legend, all over the place. The, uh, th to me, one once they go into that progressive, almost like middle eight, and you get a bit of a cl clean guitar sound, what the fuck happens to the time signatures for the rest of the song? It's just all over the place, including when he's playing that solo. And you listen to the drums, you're like, is it three, four? Could I can still cannot work you're, you're, you're not you're not far off that I'll, t I'll tell you what the yeah, signature is um, in a minute yeah um and the vocals I it just I mean alone just for that visceral aggression would have been great but when he goes into that high register epic heavy metal moment and, he, and he's got his hands aloft like that I, I remember hearing it thinking fuck me this is the best song I've heard in 20 years uh, it was really one of those moments for me okay. and um I, I, they, I'll just tell you, if you listen, listen to this band, that last album, 2019's Periphery 4, Hail Stan, it is the one time, probably since 2000, where I've heard an album and every musician on that is just pushing themselves even further. And we're already talking about a band that are known as world-class musicians. Somehow, they just got better and better. A um, bit like when Ronaldo left Man United and went to Real Madrid and somehow became even better that's what periphery are like they just they just they're just way out there and i can't wait to see them in july next year headline the radar festival at manchester but remember ronaldo then came back to man united and was shit when he came back so yeah. we, just, we, we, don't, we don't want to use that analogy for I, I will be that, by okay. the way i will just do that because we know they got 18 league goals last season but <laughs> <clears throat> right anyway Andy, what did you think it's one of your bands, isn't it, Kirk? I mean, it's, it's, very, it's very much like the ones you've recommended to us from Sugar you mentioned, and, and we've recently done a, a Dillinger Escape Plan reaction video. It's 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 not something you're going to introduce somebody to extreme metal uh, music to, is it? You know, you, you, if, if, if you want to be a fan of extreme music and heavy metal, you're going to have to build up to this because this would put people off. It's, it's so intense. It, there's so much going on. I mean, you can't you can't deny they're um, you know amazing musicians and, and a very very talented vocalist. It did seem like it was uh, almost a, a different band and playing a different song in that sort of middle section. And then they sort of came back to you know the, the first part of the song to sort of finish it off. But it, it was is our going for me if I'm honest with you. I mean, visually visually I like the video. You know the, the sort of you know the, the you know dimly lit warehouse. You know. Some performance video i like that style it, it, it's something i would have to work on if i was to get into it but you, you, you just can't den deny the talent the, you know the talent that these guys have so it, it's again like we, we spoke about before i may be able to sort of get into it if i, if I sort of work hard and give it a lot of time but it's, it's not it, it's sort of instantly accessible um but I, I can see the appeal I, I can see how passionate you are about this this type of music and this band but again not not, not one of the best things i've heard recently but okay. you can't you can't die you know what, what what they've got in the way of sort of producing music okay fair fair play uh, i was surprised you didn't mention the fact that we didn't have to give him a yellow card because he had his microphone there and they were all plugged in and we, i checked all of them they all had cables in their guitars well, and stuff so they, they did a thumbs up thing. that's a good thing but there's so much going on sort of you know certainly musically that i didn't, I didn't even pick up on that but <laughs> So, you know, they, 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 they're through the next round. They haven't got a yellow card for that. Yeah, no yellow card for that one. Um, okay, for, so for my thoughts, uh, really liked it. I thought it was a good track. Uh, I actually disagree with Andy on this one. What a surprise. I actually think it's actually quite accessible. Um, yeah. But mainly, I think it's because from a drumming point of view, you, you were talking about different time signatures. Actually, there is a consistent time signature if you know it. And even during the whole first part of that song, the first three minutes, even though there was lots going on, there was a solid groove underneath it, 
which as someone who likes music that I can get my head moving and I can kind of lock into the groove with, it me means it's much more accessible for me. Uh, you'll probably find there are bands that you would say are less extreme that I have a harder time with because they have too many various time signature changes. And I just kind of lose interest because I can't lock with the band. Whereas this one, even with all those uh, syncopated vocals, stuff going on, the synth vocals they had going on, I loved all of those elements. Uh, I did have to think for the first minute, I just was like, eh, it's just another one of these bands that have come out that sound like everyone else. There's nothing special about them. And then you get to about two minutes in where it all starts to change. And we got the synth vocals going on and then we had this whole clean section going on and i was like okay there's, there's there's some difference here and then his vocals kicked in on those areas and he really pushed himself and i can understand why you've got him down as one of your idols now because initially i was just like no nah, it's not that much greatness in his vocals for that first minute but it makes a lot more sense as it goes on um so i really liked that as I'm, i made a quick note which was just intense but with groove and that works for me as long as there's a groove in there then i can lock to it and it doesn't matter how intense it is as long as i can find where that groove is um as far as the time signature it is it's a free free four basically so it's free yes it's like da -da -da, three one two two three one two one two one two three one two three one two one two so it's, it's just kind of three three two two for each of those citations but it's a really odd one and i hate playing those time signatures because you can't enjoy the song you're counting those time griffs because you've got to lock into it but um yeah I, I i really liked it and i would check out more periphery based on that um it yeah. reminded me very much of ginger uh which is a band that i really really like so when this all kind of came in i was like considering i really like what they do it wasn't a hard stretch for me to move across the periphery because they are pretty much in the same genre they do these pretty much the same sort of things uh but in their own personal way yeah per periphery are a big influence on ginger so there are a lot of clones out there that that take periphery as their main influence ever since they put their debut out in 2010 so do you know that uh I guess it's a pejorative word, gent, to describe the yeah. onomatopoeic crunch of a downward stroke on a guitar. Gent, ja, gent, ja, gent. Um, it, it was Periphery and Tesseract, but certainly Periphery more than anyone that, that popularised that because they took Meshugga and Dillinger Escape Plan. So they are the two main influences on Periphery. In fact, we've reacted to a Dillinger Escape Plan song earlier on. And can you, if, can you imagine that live performance with the seven string down tuned guitars? That's essentially what you've got here, yeah. isn't it? It's the, uh, like you said, it's the groove that stands out with Periphery. It's, it's basically math core with groove and <laughs> Sugar's really deep guitar guitar tunings. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of bands. Ginger, clearly influenced by them. I agree with you. Yeah, I can see why. If you if you know Ginger, you would easily be able to get into Periphery. Just one last thing though, Andy. Not all the songs are like that. If anything, they actually have a few songs which almost are almost encroaching upon pop music which is a bit controversial <laughs> and puts some people off because they're like hang on is this the same band that have just done blood eagle how can you do are, are, are you trying to song? are you trying to sell this band to andy by saying they sound like pop does, <laughs> well, no, does that, has anything that andy's ever done <laughs> says that he's into pop come on <laughs> he thinks every song if you think every song sounds like it doesn't probably 60 percent of the songs do but there's a reason why we call them prog metal this band don't conform to any rules they will just change their sound that uh, like faith no more at the blink of an eye and whatever genre they turn their attention to they're experts in it okay fair enough well there we go that was periphery and blood eagle now if you liked this video please do subscribe click the bell icon like and share and we'll see you on another video sometime very soon take care